And this is Charles Lacordaire from uh, KPPC. My name is Don Hall. But, but yeah. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to six people. Yeah, okay. Here. <laughs> well, I would just like to know, uh, your new album will be a double pocket LP, is that right? Right, uh, yeah. four sides, 95 minutes, mm -hmm. 31 tracks. Right. How many of them did you write this time, George? Four. Four this time? On this side, yes. good. I've been slacking. <laughs> and Ringo? Ringo wrote one. One? Yes, a sort of country western number. But Ringo sings another one as well, one a song John wrote called Good Night. Uh -huh. I see. Is this uh, on a uh, Sergeant Pepper type trip are you returning to, or are you just going to be? No, it's it's not in, It's not really like Pepper with that concept, you know, of a show. It's nothing really like that. It's more just like a regular album, uh -huh. but it's not. It's a different thing altogether. I'll play it to you after this. Okay, you and get the look, idea. I'm looking forward to hearing it. When will it be released for uh, American? First uh, of December. First of December. Yeah. <coughs> With the Apple people. Pardon? With your company, the Apple. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Apple, uh, Apple, Apple. <laughs> Are you having fun with that? Yes. It's working out good? It's working fine, yeah. Quite a lot of work involved, but it's good, you know. The thing that comes out of it is good. It's worthwhile. We sign in more artists and everything. and uh... There's quite a few people, yeah. We've got uh, a singles album should be out in the States in a couple of weeks' time. James Taylor. Mm -hmm. It's a guy who writes all his own material. So a couple of groups, you know, a few singles. There's plenty of things coming out. Mm -hmm. I understand the uh, uppermost thing in the in the, like the company I was reading is like the sound is uh, primary. You're really producing, you know, good sound first, you know, in production and everything. Yeah. that's something that uh, it should be. I mean, uh, really, we shouldn't put out records, uh, cream and sugar. We shouldn't put out records that have, uh, you know, that we don't like. Really? That's really what it all it amounts to. You know, there's plenty of good music. <coughs> And uh, we just try and keep a high standard so that, uh, you know, that everything's nice. It doesn't have to be a hit, I don't suppose, but as long as it's good. Mm -hmm. I saw your film about five times in color. We had it over here uh, a couple months ago. Which we were doing one? The, thing, the, the Magical Mystery Tour. Oh, Mystery Tour, yeah. uh -huh, In color. Did you like it? Yes, very much. Very yeah. much. I was very moved. In fact, a couple of the scenes are very moving, as a matter of fact. Yeah. It's quite old now for us. It's like well, they haven't a year released it. Uh, they were talking about putting on American TV, and like we got, you know, an advanced film of it and showed it to one of the yeah. local places. Really, uh, just a few critics in England screwed that up. Yeah. Just yeah. by giving bad reviews, they spoiled most of America from seeing it. Uh huh. I believe it's going out on the colleges, so it's going on tour. It'd be appreciated there. Mm. It's a matter of uh, what's a very. Uh, yeah, it's a fast thing that's involved at all. I, I watched it five times. I wanted to see you know, like five more yeah, before I, I realized what's happening. The critics didn't really like it because it was like a home movie. Mm -hmm. A big home movie, which it was, you know. But, uh, I mean, they didn't try and see anything else in it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more there. I was sort of like tripping on some of the uh, parodies in there, touches of other filmmakers, too. Yeah. You know, the Grand Prix type thing yeah. with the... Uh, and then this scene, uh, well, my favorite scene on the beach with oh, the, yeah, uh, the, the older couple. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful scene. Yeah, but you know, the BBC wanted to cut that out. They thought it was obscene. <laughs> oh, that's obscene? <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> you know, old people can't it. be in love or have. No, no, they're not allowed to. <laughs> I see. No, it's, I mean, what is the, I haven't seen the. Uh, Next week sometime. Yeah, that's great. You know, I enjoy that much more than I thought I would. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of lots of nice things in it, like the sea of holes. There's a lot of uh, uh, Bosch type things. Right. If you're yeah. familiar with yeah. Bosch, just a little. Like uh, just strange creatures where the submarine goes through all different. The sea of holes is good. It's like the relativity, the time and space thing. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, 
they go through another place where there's a lot of very strange Bosch type creatures dancing around and uh, like a vacuum cleaner thing. It's very good. Which? When he pulls the lever, he goes, I just love to pull levers. And he pulls the lever? Yeah. And then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Something opens up on a picture. I haven't seen yeah. it, I was just told about it. Oh, I can't remember. This you really need to see it a couple of times. There's really? a lot going on in it. It was like the magical mystery. I watched it like five times mm. in a row. They ran it 12 times that day. Yeah. And we just stayed down and watched it. I enjoyed it more each time. Yeah. It's usually the way. Yeah. When you were uh, first first got started with the Maharishi, uh, a lot went down like we saw you know, on television, different... Uh, uh, different things said about how you, you had become disenchanted and things like that. Um, while you were into the Maharishi thing, I personally was into a, a Zen thing. Yeah. Uh, I was like making the morning, <coughs> every morning at four o'clock I'd go down and meet with uh, this uh, Zen master in Gardena out here and, uh, and he kept putting down the Maharishi mm. too because of uh, he said the Maharishi was too uh, non-committal, and he he'd never, he, like he, he one time on television he said uh, to avoid war you build bigger bombs, and, and yeah. it kind of like uh, disillusioned. You see, uh, yeah, the the problem is, well, it's it's uh, it's not really a problem, only if you make it a problem. Right. But the thing is that everything, you know, everything in the world is right and wrong and yes and no and up and down yeah. and like good and bad and good is only held in its position by bad you know you can only measure one by the other but in actual fact they're both the same thing so they so really yeah, Maharishi was great you know and there was a lot of things that he was and even down to the, the idea of doing Johnny Carson show I mean, from one side of it, you can accept everything, and from another side, you can't accept anything. It really depends, and uh, at first, you know, we wanted, I mean, really, I still, now, I'd like the whole world to wake up, mm -hmm. and uh, just to know who they are, and what they're supposed to be doing, and then it'd be a great place. I thought uh, that's why we really went along a lot with the things like with TV shows and you know I didn't mind too much the idea of somebody like Maharishi going on TV even though it's so out of context yeah it's a person like that it is so out of context yet at the same time how, you know how do you spread the, the how word do you to spread the people it? especially yeah. now like well this is a jet age so we play jet age type music and I think other people should, uh, like in a way, Maharishi was the jet age yogi. And that can't be bad entirely. <laughs> and it can't be good entirely. You know, this is the terrible thing. The truth is something that isn't good or bad, you know. It's beyond all that. And once you try and say what it is, then you, you bring yourself into that relativity of good and bad, you know. So, uh, it's really best just to find it yourself. Well, this thing about good and bad is, is uh, like, I know, uh, you know, Lenin got busted just recently. Uh, kids all over the United States are getting busted for, uh, for uh, you know, mar they're making criminals out of marijuana smokers all over uh, the yes. country. Kids are getting records and everything. Uh, you know, where is the good and where's the bad now? The, the, who do they look to? Yeah, I noticed on uh, a police car in Los Angeles, it says written on the door, to serve and to protect. Mm -hmm. And uh, that really sort of buzzed me. I was starting to wonder, like, who are they serving and who are they protecting? I mean, that's where it's really at. Because song. maybe they do serve and protect, but, you know, mm. themselves or, mm. you know, like, who? In the old days, uh, you know, when I was a kid anyway, you know, the, uh, the policeman was something to, uh, he was the man on the corner, and you go up to him and you rap with the guy, and he was there to help you, but now, uh, and not all of them, you know, certainly, but, but uh, the principles they live by and the rules that they have to enforce now are, are so archaic that, uh, that they're made out to be, and in most cases, uh, 
they probably are because they're so dedicated or the the uh but that's the trick, you see, because they say, well, it's not me, it's somebody up there telling me what to do, and you can never find who, like, who is the guy up at the top, because uh, the load, they shift the load, you know. Take the load off, Annie. <laughs> What's the, uh, the overall scene uh, in, uh, in England right now, so far as people our age is concerned? I was in England, uh, in 64 and 65. In fact, I saw yeah. you at uh, at a theater um, with I think Roy Albertson. Oh, yeah. That's where it was at yeah. then in 64. Yeah. It's not it's not bad, you know. Like compared to America, it's really the same. It's the same all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's a thing, you know. Outside agitators. <laughs> <laughs> outside dissonant, agitators. Dissonant outside elements. Inside, you know. right. The thing is that we have it, but it's. Again, like everything is just that bit smaller than America, you know, less money, less industry, less everything. So it's, there's less uh, revolutionaries. It's you can see the changes know, happening in this country though. Yeah. Right? Oh, you can see them happening there, but it's still, it's like relative in mm -hmm. size to America, you know, so it, the changes are smaller because there's less people trying to change it, but there's less people who don't want it to change as well, which Here. is good. No, in England, because it's generally smaller, you know. The, the thing is, there was to have been uh, a big demonstration, I think, just last week sometime, and it was going to be like the biggest demonstration of all time, because every the, all the demonstrators, for whatever they're demonstrating about, are just getting together now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have roughly the same sort of thing as they had in Chicago. You know, they have police coming around with their horses and sticks and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, they're getting more determined the as movement. they are in America. To return to a sort of a music scene, do you think, you know, music to me has always been sort of a mirror, you know, of the culture, of the society, and, you know, the big insurgence now of blues yeah. and everything. And, um, you know, I noticed, you know, your music has mirrored, you know, a different perspective yeah. Yeah. still. You know, you haven't gone into that as John Mayall and, and you know, other people. Yeah. What do you think uh, um, the music, uh, in more or less in what direction will we be mirroring, you know, in well, the this, next few years? The new al this new album of ours is uh, really generally, with the exception of uh, soft, sweet songs, uh, generally I've got a bit heavier. Mm -hmm. Much heavier. The thing is that I mean, we never got into like that purest thing, like John Mayall, and you know that. I mean, that's what one thing I don't entirely agree with. Well, not for us anyway. You know, I think mm -hmm. I like so much different music. I wouldn't like to just get hung up doing one thing, like the blues, and then that's it for the rest of your life playing twelve bar. <laughs> but um. But this new album, you know, has got much heavier, and there's there is a blues track on it actually oh, really? called Your Blues, <laughs> and which is quite bluesy. I don't know how the purest blues people are going to take it, but you know, it's still as valid as any other blues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is blues? Yeah, yeah really. I'm so lonely, wanna die. Uh -huh. So lonely, wanna die. Mm -hmm. Dying dead already. Woo! You know the reason why. <laughs> Something like that, really. Yeah. I noticed, you know, the reason... T-Bone Lennon <laughs> T -bone. and B.B. Harrison. <laughs> that um, I heard an interview with Donovan and he was speaking of returning to, you know, the old uh, minstrel... Back to the R&B like he used to do. Right, just himself and uh, perhaps another person. Yeah. Don's thing is really, I think... I never enjoy Donovan's records as much as I enjoy him just singing with a guitar. You know, he was with us in India where he wrote Hurdy Gurdy Man and lots of the things off his new Hurdy Gurdy Probably album. Probably Tangier too. And so nice, you know, he does them so great. And then he goes in the recording studio and something happens, you know, for my personal taste. I'd rather have him completely as he is with his guitar mm. full stop. Or to go into the studio and do it really, you know, amazing. But it always falls like half and half when he records. Great fellow though, good old Don. We love you, Donovan. <laughs> I guess we do. Well, we could return to another.
What are your feelings uh, here right now in the USA? You feel the thing of uh, they're having elections now, you know? I think it's, being... uh, it's funny, it's really funny you should say that about the elections. <laughs> I feel that, I've, you know, from time to time I feel that there's no difference between past, present and future. It's all the same. Uh -huh. And particularly today when there's three uh, bad guys to pick from, <laughs> So it's going to be the most popular of these three guys. Well, it's going to suddenly be the president. And we all know he's not the one. He's not going to do it. Whoever it is isn't going to be the one. Mm -hmm. And so we've already passed that. I mean, if you put yourself now, suddenly imagine in two years' time when whoever, which one of these three is going to be out there doing it, then, you know, there's no difference. It's all like a waste of time. It's very sad, really, that when you know that the future isn't going to be right, well, a lot of people are change. hoping. A lot of people are hoping that uh, that Wallace gets in, so it'll come down faster, so it'll all change faster. Mm. You know? I think uh, Paul. What's it, Paulson? Pat Paulson. Pat Paulson. Pat Paulson. Pat, he's my man. <laughs> really? Yes. Or we should have Tommy Smothers get him in there. Well, do you think there's a possibility, you know, in this country or either, you know, in England, of a man becoming the leader or president or whatever, whose interest is in the uh, common man? Is I this don't know. I can't see, you see. Anybody who is genuinely interested in the country and the people... Gets killed. Yeah. Really? Either gets killed or doesn't make it for long enough. Whereas, uh, you know, these the other people who become presidents don't it, it doesn't seem to have anything to do with the country or the people you know it's completely their own scene their ego the thing of I'm the prez watch out so that then they can Arr. die as the famous president who did this and who did that and you know it's it's on such a crummy level that you know it's not worth talking about really I think I won't talk about you know it's a yeah. joke all that presidents and you know prime ministers they're all the same mm -hmm. Heads of the uh, protectorates mm. of the status quo. Well, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> when I was about 14 years old, I know I wanted to ball the queen, but I don't know if that might have. Been. <laughs> uh, I went to see the queen. She wasn't there. The queen, yeah. The queen's all right, though. Actually, the queen's. You know, it's not. It's different. Like the prez over here. The prez seems to be the heavy guy. Whereas in the Queen, is just like goes around Finger. waving all the time, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know it's really her karma, her, you know the fickle finger of fate pointed at her, and she happened to, you know, she didn't split, and she had to go around waving. But she is, she's a nice lady, and that makes it even worse somehow. Well, Prince Charles, I don't know, and Prince Anne. Prince Anne, <laughs> they seem to be getting more hip. I mean, she's now got her mini skirt two inches above the ankle. So, you know, she's really coming on. Actually, they're good. The, the royal family are quite hip, you know. Margaret and yeah. Tony Armstrong yeah. Jones and Princess Alexandra, you know, they all, they're the same. They have their big thing of, like, you know, we've got the new Apple Records now, and have you heard this one? And really? all that. You know, the. They're not as stodgy as is made out. The fault lies in the Houses of Parliament. And uh, Guy Fawkes was a good guy. Do you know about him? No. There was this guy called Guy Fawkes, who I'm not sure about the dates here, but some years ago, probably a couple of hundred years ago, he sailed up the River Thames to blow up the Houses of Parliament. But they caught him, and he never made it. So every 5th of November, in England, it's a big scene where they have big fires burning in people's gardens and streets and they throw dummies <laughs> of Guy on the fire. And other people drive round London with stickers on their car saying, come back Guy Fawkes, we need you. <laughs> How's everybody's health? John and Paul, how are the health? How are they? Yeah. The health? Mm -hmm. uh, Quite good, actually, considering what we've been through. Mm -hmm. The last, uh, you know, the last summer has been uh, very busy for us. You know, with the 
trying to set up this Apple thing and trying to get ourselves together, you know, because we had to really find out everything about our own personal affairs and the group and business affairs since Brian died. You know, we had a, it was really hard because there was nobody else who could do it except us. So we had to do it and at the same time we had to try and make this album. So just at the moment everybody, we just finished the album and everybody's just going away for a break, have a holiday. So I think we've made it. You know, we come back refreshed to Christmas with the family. Do you have problems uh, combining the business trip and the uh in the music trip, they are different, aren't they? Not really, no, because music is my business. Mm. So it's quite easy. George, are you going to release a Christmas record this year? You mean one of those fan club records? Right. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. I want But it's still only available to people in the official Beatles fan club. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> we've got two, 64 and 66, and we'd like to get their other ones. Well, really, that's something that, uh, you know, we were doing specially for the fans. How many fans are there over there in England? <laughs> There's quite a lot. But you see, the thing is, they pay their money and they get the pictures and information on that. But the main thing they really get by being a fan is this Christmas record we do. And it's pointless if we put it out so everybody can buy it, because then, yeah. you know, they don't get anything special. But we'll be doing that again. Yeah, we'll do it probably first week in December. Is there any such thing as uh, underground, in quote, radio in, uh, no, in England? No, BBC. there's nothing. The underground radio, or that you could compare to underground, was on the sea, which were the pirate ships. And there were about three or four pirate stations, and uh, the government formed, had some new laws made, you see, because, I mean, you're not allowed to have radio in England, you know. They're allowed to have radio, but we're not. <clears throat> so we go on now wailing on with the BBC, which is a joke. And there's no pirate stations left at all, except that there's this good guy who started the first pirate ship and who has a little plan. So maybe if that works out, we'll have another pirate radio and TV station. So he's planning to pirate TV color TV and the whole bit. They'll be out of sight. Yeah. If it works. But then, you know, again, they make another law and, you know, somebody will make some other plan and then they make another law and it just goes on and well, on. We've been kind of lucky so far. We've been on the air for a year and uh, very, very few problems so far with the FCC. Who's the FCC? The Federal Communications Commission. <laughs> Them. As you yeah, say. Then. <clears throat> yeah. Are you in the union? They uh, paid your dues? No. no. <laughs> We're paying our dues now in a different way. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we'll just close it out now. It's really been a pleasure talking to you, George. Thank you. And uh, yeah. station ID. Yeah, if it would be station ID. It's kind of this uh, wonderful K P P P P P P C. In Pasadena. In Pasadena, yes. This is my home in Pasadena. Oh, the grass. Great. Is the grass really greener in Pasadena? Uh, I don't think so. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so I'll say my name. To make it official, I'd like to say this is George Harrison of the Beatles uh -huh. on wonderful KPPPPPPC where the grass is greener in Pasadena. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, George.